If our team suggests tonight, I wish to share with you what it was like growing up in Catalina City and how those experiences shaped my life, in, in which in part came about through what I like to call defining moments. For me, I can't remember my first defining moment, but some of you in this room do. My mother, Virginia Ree, unexpectedly died at the young age of 25. Ramon was five years old, David was three, and I was almost one. Since my father was away in uh, service during World War II, he couldn't raise us. There was family talk about splitting us up to ease the burden of having to raise and take care of three babies. But my grandmother, my mother's mother, wouldn't stand for it. At that point, Olivia and Buck Langston, were, <clears throat> who were already in their late 40s, took on the responsibility to make sure that we would not be separated and would remain in Calhoun City. It was truly a defining moment in our lives. Without the devotion of our grandparents, I most likely would not have had the opportunity to grow up in Calhoun City and to experience the love and support so many in this community showed me. <clears throat> My grandparents, as many of you know, operated a small cafe on the square. It was located in the northeast corner over here close to the food wall, and then was moved over just behind what is now off the alley, uh, which is uh, close to the was close to the old post office. A another defining moment <clears throat> came on my first day of school. Uh, I was still five years old when I started school, but it remains that day uh, is one I'll always remember. When we were let out of recess that morning, I hid under the sidewalk on the south side of the school. <laughs> Many of you remember the sidewalk that went down the south side. It was ditch it just kind of eroded out up underneath there you can just get under the sidewalk but that's what I did well when the bell rang and it was time to return to the classroom I ran back to the cafe needless to say my grandmother wasn't impressed she, she had this metal flashlight and promptly marched me back to school right down the sidewalk right here <laughs> popping my bottom every few steps I didn't try that again Growing up in a small town was a blessing for me. The kids in Calhoun City were watched over by all the parents. If you did something wrong, it most likely would get back to your parents before you got home. If you had a wreck on your bike and needed a few stitches, Dr. Acock and Dr. Webb would take care of it. And if you knocked out a tooth, Dr. Carter Dobbs was your man. We were fortunate to have so many dedicated teachers in Calhoun City. Teachers like Ms. Francis, Professor and Ms. Harrison, Ms. Denton, Rose Chandler, Peggy Dudley, Ruth and Roger Hudson, Mr. James and Ms. Lackey, Mr. and Ms. Adams, Mr. Jane Harrelson, Ms. Harden, and Coach Shadows, Coach Bain, and Coach McCoo. And how could we ever forget Mr. Adams using his coach sleeve as a blackboard to race him? <laughs> and you understand that. <laughs> Our teachers and coaches were always there for us. We were also fortunate to have many more adults in Calhoun City who took time to volunteer for various youth activities. I remember the leaders of Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorers, and Girl Scouts who were always willing to give them their time and money to provide the opportunities for the youth of the city. You remember them, Dr. Carter, especially if you were in scouting, Dr. Carter Dobbs, Charles Hawkins, Hank Reese, George Walls, Charles Beasley, for the scouts, and then you had Miss Hudson, Miss Flanningham, Miss Duke, and Miss Ball for the Girl Scout leaders, and I'm sure there were others. High school basketball tournaments, golly, those were big during the days. I also remember how proud we were when Scott Suber was selected to the All America team while playing football at Mississippi State, and then the city honored him with Scott Suber Day. I also remember playing football in Hank and Jimmy Gage's front yard. It looks small today, Jimmy Gage. <laughs> it's real small. And then we also played down in, uh, George, in George Bowles' yard. Um, some of the girls would skate in the prior funeral home parking lot. Francis Moraine, Barbara Jean, and Judy Poe turned the showroom at the funeral home into their very own private playhouse. <laughs> it was girls only. And I can attest to that, there were no boys allowed, because one time, and I wasn't going to tell this on them, but one time I wanted to play, I mean, we were small in that guys. 
we were small. And it had two doors. I came in one door, they cut out the lights and went out the back door. Left me in that showroom hall. <laughs> in the dark. I'm bumping into Cassie's. 